You've been to her classes. What are we? No, what I, are I we mean, not supporting I mean, black why, women why, now? I, I love Shakira. Whew. That's what we're. That's what you're gonna try. That's what you're gonna try. Interesting. Anyways, the y'all big... expected it to be me. No one's a bigger ass. Just put that white fist <laughs> down. <laughs> Welcome to Playing House, the podcast about keeping your relationship sexy and secure. I'm Coulter. And I'm Dom. And we're a real couple having real discussions and inviting you in, kind of like our third. Our third? Let's use that. On today's episode, maintaining individuality, personal hobbies and interests, setting boundaries, and fostering independence. But first, how you doing this week? What's I'm, up? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I'm doing really well. I uh, went out on a Friday night for the first time Whoa. in a very long time. Like, what's, Who's what's, this girl? What's the mom doing outside? Even um, my girl Shakira, who invited me out, she was like, look at you outside past 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. You looked hot as fuck. Shakira looked Thank hot as you. fuck. Y'all looked hot as fuck. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, we saw a live taping of the uh, of tonight's conversation, which is a pretty popular uh, podcast. A lot of people on that one, hey? Oh, my, so like the, I think there were people. like five people on that panel. Um, but there are like thousands of people. They sold out the Metro Toronto Convention Center. Their first, um, their first live taping outside of the States was a big deal. And, uh, it was really cool to see. So like, it was inspiring. Cause like one day this podcast is going to take off that way or hopefully to that, that level. If one, not one day they're going to be talking about us. They're going to exactly. be like, Oh my God. Exactly. So see what these the two losers are up to. It was it was really inspiring because like this is what episode four for us. This is four. This is a, this is a big milestone. That's a that's a, that's a, big, four is milestone. a big milestone. We're almost at five. And like, then after you know what comes after five, half a dozen cancellation. We'll see. Oh god. Keeping our fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm really happy because um every year you set a goal to have a number of like solo dates. Yes. Would you consider this a solo no, date? No, my solo dates are truly like just just me. you. So like when I go to the spa by myself and when I get a hotel room for myself, like those are solo dates. And so this year the goal was to hit six of those. I think I'm at four. So I got a couple of weeks left to make those six happen. I'm such a narcissist that I assume like solo just means without me. Wow. Like you're solo whenever wow. you're not with me. So that brings us back to today's topic being maintaining individuality. So like, no, I'm not solo when I'm just without you. I'm solo when I am alone. Right. Yeah. I was solo Friday night. Yeah, you were. Been a while. Been a while since. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were. <laughs> been a while since I've done that um, or had that opportunity. It was nice. It was nice to like have the house to myself. Yes, because you don't have to watch Nini when I <laughs> am not here. It's you have to delightful. drop her somewhere else. Yes. It's kind of like, so like typically Saturday mornings, I'll try to give Dominique a couple hours to just like do your own thing. Yeah, Sunday yeah, mornings yeah. or whatever. Absolutely. absolutely. Take Nina to dance class or we'll go do something and then I'll do groceries. And like, it's kind of nice for you, right? And Ooh, also it's like- It's lovely. What are you talking about? You work from home three days a week. Mm -hmm. So you're like, yeah, you're working, I'm but you not, have the place to yourself. I, I'm working in my office with the door Bro, closed in meetings. Nobody's it's not like that. I'm home alone enjoying nobody. the house and having bubble baths. Nobody's disputing okay. that. I don't know where you're going with that, though. That's, that's all I'm saying. It was just nice to have a Friday night to myself. <laughs> Couple hours, you know. What'd you do? Popped a gummy. Ooh. Yeah, I could tell when I got home, actually. J O. Very much tell. Okay. J O. And then when you came home, well, please and thank you. You're welcome. Uh, you are most no, welcome, sir. You are most okay. welcome. <laughs> Tr trust me, you are most welcome. And thank you. Happy to bless you with this. <laughs> Happy to happy to sprinkle sprinkle, you know. Sprinkle sprinkle. Yeah, you're welcome. Shout out to you. I have. Is it this coming Friday? I got this coming you Friday day off, off yep. whole day. Yeah, but yeah. You're at work that day, like in the I office. Am. I am. Nia's is in daycare. What kind of she hijinks is. am I going to get up to? Probably going <laughs> to pop another gummy in jail a little bit. Okay. Or do a you, lot. Do you need an entire day off to do that? Is that? No, it's just nice to have like the maneuverability. I don't have to like time it for a specific slot, true, right? Sure, sure, sure. I could just kind of like, eh, maybe now, maybe later, <laughs> maybe now, and maybe later. Definitely now, definitely later. Love this for you. Thank you. Love this. By the way, you have a like a, an eyelash right there, and I'm nervous it's gonna go in your eye. I think you got it. Do you want to make the wish? You only get one wish with this. Uh, you make go it count. Ahead. You no, go no, ahead. no. You okay. need it. You need it more than I do. Nice. Thank you. Wonder, wonder where it went. <laughs> onto your keyboard oh it did <laughs> okay 
That's where wishes go to uh, thrive. My keyboard, which is definitely covered in like food. I don't want to know. Some of the Nobody stuff that happens when know. like you JR, oh, right? God. A little mist. <laughs> <laughs> a light dusting. So there's that. Okay, shall we get into the uh to the episode? Yeah, let's 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 okay. kick it off. Family matters, baby. Absolutely. We're introducing some new segments this time around. Episode four. Boop, 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 button that does you want that. the air horn? Wow. Wow. We started early with it. Thank you. Da- oh, wow. I thought you were doing more. Okay, cool. By the way, I have a new mute button. Do you see how she treats me? Yes. Let's talk about the mute button. I think I should have access to your mute button. For what? For, for what for, reason for would you want? For muting the disrespect. Oh, wow. Wow. It's my cough button because this cough will not go away. Um. So anyway, anytime I'm ready, I just... You didn't hear that because we have a new fancy... Uh, mute button so we're upgrading that's that's you're that's, welcome by the way you're welcome and you're welcome and <laughs> i am most welcome Amazing. it's too bad this doesn't like you couldn't like hook it right to your vocal cords just like then you wouldn't think think about it you could go to the movies and cough nobody would hear you press the mute button like a physical mute button so are you thinking that my cough is fun and that everybody else around me is the one that has to suffer well, you it sure and do that, it a lot okay cool maybe the butt maybe the mute button could be one of your nipples and every time you cough, you just like, that's the sound it would make too. That's or, what stops my cough. Bloop. My, my, my clacking bloop. my own nipple. Ploop. Ploop. <laughs> You're a dunce What cap. sound do you think a nipple makes? <laughs> this is kind of like if a tree falls in a forest. <laughs> I wish nipples what made sounds. sounds. And, and, and it would make the, what was the sound again? Well, there's several. Okay. Oh. That's what the latest that? one. Oh. What's happening? That's the nipple. Family matters. Okay, that's the first segment. So um, going back to the theme, which is about maintaining individuality. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind for me is remembering when we got when we first got married. Back in what, eight years ago, almost nine years ago now. That'd be nine in January. Yes. Uh, I had no plans to change my last my last name. It was for several years. You didn't exactly for the first, I think, three years we were married, probably four. Yeah, we got back from Dubai. Yeah. And then we had no money. And I was like, listen, you want a cheap Christmas present? I'm just uh, changing the old last name. And I did it. I'm crossing over to the dark side. Ironically, kind of kind of gaslighting when you think about it. Like, don't get me a gift. Just change your name. Save your money. (laughs) How's that gaslighting? (laughs) It's manipulative. I don't think it's gaslighting. Oh, that's better. It's all forms of manipulation, no? My train of thought was if you wanted the traditional I got to propose to you, gender Mm -hmm, rules, mm -hmm. and you wanted me down on a knee Mm -hmm. and all of that, Mm -hmm. I feel like your responsibility then, you want to do tradition, you got to take my last name. I think it's fair to want that. I think it's fair to to want to follow a traditional way of getting married and having the woman change her last name. Sure. I think it's different when it's tit for tat and it's if you want all this, then you must do all that. That's not as genuine as, well, this is tradition and this is what has happened in my family and I'd like to it maintain is. that. It has. But that's not what you said, is it? You said... If you want all this stuff, then you must do this too. I didn't listen. If I said that, it would have ruined the surprise. Hey, I'm going to propose to you tonight. Uh, before you accept, couple of conditions. Number one, you will have to change your last name. That's what you just said, though. You just said if you want I'm me to do X, now, Y, Z, yeah, there's yeah. no surprise to ruin. Okay, you, so again, I propose the manipulation you. in the back of your mind. It's not what you what you. Um, had expressed, but it's what you were thinking. Well, I was 23 years old. So what, you, 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 what? I what? fuck it up at 32. I definitely fucked it up at 23. <laughs> so you regret saying that? You regret that request? Which request? For you to marry me or for <laughs> no. you to take my last name? Take, take your last name. No, I don't regret either one of those things. Okay. Yeah, I don't regret it either. It's just, it's just the first thing that I think of. And I know that um, speaking with other women who made the choice to change their last name as well. Like there's a, there's an identity crisis that kind of happens. Mm. Cause like you've been 
one person this entire time have been Dominique Bennett. And I've created a new person. Or yeah, whoa. Two, including our daughter. It's 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 deep because when you change your last name, they want you to get a whole new birth certificate. Because you've been reborn. But I think that's like Jesus. wild. Like the dick is great and all, but it didn't rebirth me. Like that's that's ridiculous. The dick is great and it's, all. It's great. It's excellent. That's I think why it's a I'm still better here. Than great. I think it's a little better it's than excellent. excellent. So what's better than excellent? Perfection. Transcendent. The dick is transcendent. The d- <laughs> Okay, I think transcendence suggests the same thing as rebirth, no? And I have rebirthed you with the dick. So that's why I went ahead and did not get a new birth certificate because it just felt like it, a, a, <laughs> it's ridiculous for the government to say, yes, uh, please affirm that Coulter's dick is this excellent that you have been rebirthed. Just look into and the camera and do it right now. That's all I need. <laughs> you change your last name back. Transcendent. Say the whole thing. Can't confirm. Can't confirm. Look. I am the captain now. Into the camera. Coulter's dick is transcendent. Are you under duress? Partly. Okay, look into that camera now. Why are there multiple cameras? That's the wide shot. Okay, I, why do I have to look into this? This is the... your camera. What, 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 what now? What now? Now what? it's over. You've ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> I think part of it comes from like maybe a lack of confidence on my behalf at the time. To make such a big deal about it. I don't think you made that big a deal, to be honest. I, I truly don't. I, I I think you shared every so often, like in times when it was appropriate to do so, um, that it was something that you wanted. And I we when we got married, it was it all happened very quickly. You you proposed on like the nineteenth, we got ma- married like two weeks later. on the third of the following month, and then we moved to a whole nother country a couple months after that. Yeah. It, even with it, within all of that, it's packing up all our things. It's getting passports arranged. It's getting visas. It's getting all these things. There was no time to also get paperwork to change my last name. So it was like when all that was finished with and we came back to Canada and we were settled in our new homes and our new jobs, you were like, by the way, this is this is something I'd really like. Did they give us a hard time? Because like Dubai, I don't know if you know, pretty repressive. Repressive? Pretty repressive. Uh, you can't You can't move in together Unless you're married. That's no longer the case. Well, it should be. (laughs) That's no longer the case. But at the time, I'm trying to think like, yeah, did we have to prove we're married? Absolutely not. That's why I don't think, I think there's like, there's this conception that it is, but I did not feel that way at all living Mm. there. Did you? That it was repressive? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah. And I'm a white man. Right. Right. If I did. Confirm that as well. Surely to God, you totally felt repressed over there. Listen, I feel repressed in my daily life in Canada, too. So that's why, to me, it wasn't anything e- extra in terms of, What an of indictment like... of, of <laughs> the West. What, what an indictment of Canada. I just think, like, when we talk about racism in Canada, for example, we're just a lot more polite with it. We're able to, like, keep it so that it's socially acceptable racism. With Socially acceptable with whom? society not with me i'm an ally if you don't put your white fist down um versus living in dubai like it was straight up like oh are you african oh are you are you a prostitute was the question i got often or just nobody said straight up are you a prostitute but there were like certain questions that suggested like oh are you here for like how much for a hand that type of business type of deal um which like asking someone if they're African is not racist, but just like <clears throat> straight up things like that. Like in, in Canada, you wouldn't come up to someone and say, where are you from? But well, where are you really from? No, but you people do say that all the time. I guess. Yeah, they do. But maybe, maybe they are the same place. OK. No, I'm just kidding. That's a that's a dictatorship. Uh, again, Dubai. Yeah. Well, I mean, like the UAE. It's, it's controlled by one person. Yeah. You know? How is in Canada? Uh, yeah. Canada's a king. That's fucked up. Get rid of the king. Not like, I'm not, listen, I'm not saying like violence or anything. I don't mean like that. Like, get rid of him. But <laughs> but yeah, uh, we don't need a monarchy. And his fingers. Have you seen the fingers? Oh no. My God. Look up. I've refused to call him King Charles. Look up Prince Charles. He must be humbled. Look up his fingers. <laughs> That's the reason Camilla's sticking around. Oh, my. They look like, they look like giant sausages. Oh, my God. They look like street meat. His ring is stuck. Yeah, I don't think that's ever coming out. Wow. Is he sick? Yeah, probably. Well, they're so inbred, right? Just a bunch so of cousin hands. fuckers. 
So that's, that affects your head. Sure, it affects a lot of stuff. I guess. The yeah. face looks kind of weird. Everything. Is that a normal looking man? And he's not. I don't, I don't fuck with this man. I, don't, I have no idea what he You know who he did? Does. His cousin. Okay. And that's how we got here? And that's how we got here. That's it. A lesson in history. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> that's what this podcast does. It teaches history. Absolutely. That being said, um, we also moved around a lot. Like we were just talking about, we moved to Dubai. Like right out of school, after we graduated, we moved to Dawson Creek, BC, which is not where they shot the show. It's just a small ass town in northern Ontario. Um, we moved there. I was one of like five black people. Wikipedia said 30. We, we changed never. it on Wikipedia. We changed it to 31. And then when we left, we changed it back to 30. <laughs> you did. You know? I did not know you were doing that. Um, but never saw those 30 people, by the way. I saw four others, probably. There was like, oh, what was his name? I don't remember. And he, he was like his his wife and kid lived in New York. Right, 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 right. He was, I don't even know where he was. Was he Grenadian as well? I think, he, I remember him being Caribbean. I don't remember if he was Grenadian. I think he was Grenadian. Maybe. And he would, because Dawson Creek was like an oil town. So like people would come there, make tons of money. Yeah. A couple head months back home. and go home. Yeah. Uh, so we would bump into him at like the grocery store sometimes. And then you had a, a woman who did your hair. The, these are all the black people that we're mentioning. She and was even Jamaican, when I, I think. I don't remember. But when I saw him, like when he saw me in the the grocery store, like we both ran to each other like, hey, what are you doing here? Hi, great to see you. Because like, oh my God, another black person. Um, so living there and then moving to Dubai. Um, and again, we this is like right after we got married. So like, who am I now that I'm this married person? Like, what does this mean for me? Like starting a new career, especially like going there, we thought, oh, we have to be married to live here, to live together. Um, in my mind, I had this like certain expectation of how I was supposed to present myself too. So it was like, again, this weird identity figuring out crisis for me at the end of the day. And then ultimately moving where we do live now, which is in a different city for my, for my family. And so it's like 20 minutes away, but still like it feels, I wasn't driving for a while. So if it, was, it was on transit, it'd be like an hour, 90 minutes to get to my family. Oh, I forgot you weren't driving yet. I got my license like a couple of years ago. Remember that? Damn. Right. And pandemic on top of that, having a kid on top of that, you having cancer on top of that. Like there was a, a lot of like moments that felt very isolating. Mm. And so it was like in all of this, who am I, who am I in, in, in these new experiences in, in the world, in the greater society. And it was really hard. And I'm still trying to figure it out. Like, who am I beyond Coulter's wife? Well, who are you? You know who you are. Well, I mean, like, I'm that girl at the end of the day. Um, that bitch. Period. But even like... On, like Maybe legally change your name to that, that bitch. bitch. <laughs> First name that, last name <laughs> bitch. Um, <laughs> even <laughs> in your content... We'll see a lot of comments like, oh, the wife. Like, my name doesn't really exist. I words fucking I've... hate when people say the wife. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was talking to, let me ask the wife. Oh, my God. Is this the wife? Makes me want to rip off my own face. <laughs> the wife. I don't talk to many people who, like, really talk like that. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Shut the fuck up, the you. wife. Okay. Or when people go, oh, my God, hubster, the hubs. Hubby. The hubby. Yeah. I want to swallow my own tongue. That's annoying. That's annoying. Well, like, again, people who are okay with having their entire identities being their relationship. And sometimes you can't help it. Like, for a long time, my entire identity has been my relationship with you because, like, that's been the biggest part of my life. It's been, like, marrying you and moving around the world and, like, starting a... That's so a sweet. Thank you. I know that's not the point you're trying to make, but that's really sweet. Thank you. <laughs> It means a lot to me. And that's not to say it's not still one of the biggest parts of my life. Of course, like being Nia's mom is, being your wife is. But like so is being You're Dominique. your own whole ass exactly. human being. Exactly. Exactly. And it can be difficult to like, it can be difficult to remember, I want to say like who you used to be. It can be difficult to remember who you are at your core. Mm. And it's it's this weird game of like, who was I before I got married? Who was I before I became a mom? But also, who am I on my own today? Yes. Because of those things. Absolutely. Because we're all a product. We're all products of our experiences. Mm. And so, as much as you want to, like, 
cleave this part of you that's just for you, it's almost impossible to do that because that that even that small part of you, let's say, we've set aside, it's still influenced by everything else in yeah. your life. Yeah. Like if you were if you were your individual self and like that little part of you, you sectioned off a little part of you that wasn't a mom, that wasn't married, that didn't have a job, like that didn't have all of these other qualifiers. All the titles. Yeah. What would you do? Absolutely. Like it, <clears throat> You'd be it, out there fucking the whole town. I would be. I would be fucking the town? Yeah. Not, Suddenly oh, not, I have not, community not pussy town. because I'm not your wife? What? I don't know. <laughs> Who would you be, right? <laughs> Listen, I would be the town ice cream truck. Oh, okay. Around the block, baby. Oh, my. Somehow every episode goes back to like you getting a sugar mom or sugar daddy or no, like it's just... for us. All of this is for us. <laughs> no, it's for us. All of this is for us. <laughs> I do it for the family. I'm like Walter White in Breaking Bad. I'm not selling meth because I want to. I'm selling meth because I have to. Wow, what a hero! Thank you. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, it's true. Like when you when you break away all these these titles, like your job, like you mentioned, like your family, like your role in your family, for example. What it is that you bring to society. The transcendent dick. The tra- Say I it mean, for the camera. Say it for the camera. The transcendent dick. Um, <laughs> it's kind of hot, actually. <laughs> when you take all that away. <clears throat> sorry. Wow, my voice is gone. When you take all that away, what is it that you... Who are you at the end of the day? Who are you when you wake up? And what are you bringing to the table for yourself? Not for the rest of society. But like, when you think... Of, when I think about it for myself... I wake up and I'm dedicating every part of me to, to to the rest of the world, to my job, to you, to Nia. How do you keep a little bit for yourself? How do you keep a little it's bit hard. for yourself? So I'm going to ask you this question. Like when you think of maintaining individuality, what comes to mind for you? It's difficult because, I mean, I've had... I've been broadcasting for a decade. Yeah. What's today, the ninth? A week away from yes. 10 years. That's insane. 10 years ago, I moved wow. to Dawson Creek and Dominique joined me like a month and a half later. That was my first job in radio. And it's this weird, it's been this weird career. And I'm sure this is the same for a lot of people who do what I do. Of, of almost being a version of yourself when you're on air. And for the first couple of years of my career in Dawson Creek in Dubai, I tried to figure out how I could best kind of create this, like there's Coulter, the person. And then there's like Coulter, the personality, Coulter, the brand, Coulter, the broadcaster. And over time, those two have just kind of become the same. And like who I am off the air is influenced who I am on the air, but also who I am on the air Mm -hmm. and and doing this, for instance, being like a public figure has influenced who I am individually, personally, right. at home. And it is, it's the same creature, I guess. And so it can be difficult to set boundaries. It can be difficult when people DM me and they think we... Do you know what a parasocial relationship is? No. I just learned this. Um, Meg, Meg Nab, Okay. taught me this maybe a year ago. Shout out to Meg. She... Described it like this. She goes, you're on air and you're speaking to people every single day. What we're doing right now, we're speaking to people. TikTok, people are watching and and listening to me for hundreds, sometimes thousands of hours. And you love it. I do. But sometimes people think that you're friends. (laughs) They get a little too friendly. Right? Because they know so much about you. Yep. But a true friendship is, is give and take. This is just mm. me giving and them taking. And as much as I appreciate the support and as much as 99.9% of people get it, right, can right. respect boundaries, yep. want their boundaries respected, there's that 0.1% of people who take it too far. Mm. Who, like what, what has happened? Um, okay, so this one listener was aligned with a charity that I was working with. And giving the background that you work in radio. I work in radio, li- has listened to the show forever, very supportive. And wanted to chat about collaborating on a fundraiser. Totally fine. Blocked my number when I called him, gave me his number, calls the show all the time. And we chatted a couple of times. And then one time I forgot to block my number. 
And then so we started texting me. And I was like, oh, well, the guys already got my number. Like, we're working on the charity thing. And it was about that. And it was like, I guess this is okay. But then it it became not okay. Okay. And this person would just, like, randomly call me. To say what? Just to, like, check in. Hey, what's going on? See, I don't call I don't call my 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 best friend randomly. I still like prompt her like, "Hey, are you free? Are you busy right now? Is this a good time to call you?" So for somebody who I don't even know on that level to randomly pick up the phone and call me. But that's exactly why. You and your friend have boundaries that have been established, mm. right? Me and this person clearly did don't not know each other. And it was like I had this moment of, "Am I the bad guy for saying right. like d- right. you, you can't you got to delete yeah. my number?" But you're going to pay the money to change your number. No, get out of here. Well, that's what I said. Hey, this is inappropriate. If you want to chat, you know where to call me during the day. You have my email address like as my in your professional show. email address my, yeah. during my show. Yeah. But like, this is not cool. This is we're like, we're just we're not friends. Right, 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 right. I give a service. I provide a product. And I'm very glad that you enjoy that. But that doesn't entitle you to my space it doesn't entitle you to my space and i remember and these are wildly different examples but like i would always get kind of pissed when you would see name a list celebrity here beyonce if beyonce was like hey i'm having dinner right now like why are you approaching me oh right 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 or like no i'm not going to sign an autograph no i'm not going to give a picture oh it's just two seconds just do it and and that's what i always thought right right, right. what's what's the what's the big fucking deal right like but it is. You're who you are because of your fans. And it's like, well, no, you sell a wildly popular product. And Which people is sometimes pay yourself. For that product, and that's it. But you're selling concert tickets. You're making music. Exactly. Yeah. People are subscribing, like, and I appreciate that. And I know Beyonce appreciates that. <laughs> we hope. But that does not entitle you to Beyonce's space. And so every one of us needs to think of ourselves as Beyonce. And I know that I that might do. be blasphemous. But, like, no one is entitled to your space. It's not the diamonds. Except your child. Your child is going to be. Well, yeah, to your space. again, it's. Your it, child it's, needs you for survival. You prioritize these things, right? You prioritize who gets access to you and when. So, if it's a matter of my boss is texting me and it's 8 p.m., which has never happened, by the way, like, it has happened, but like my current job, it has not happened because she understands. Please don't boundaries. fire Dominique. Let me make that very clear. We like clear. the cash coming in. Love my boss. Great excellent, product. Excellent. Wow. Uh, <laughs> boss listens product. to the show. Very respectful. Shout out to her. Hasn't called me. <laughs> but you can call me if you want to. Like, listen, I could use what? the endorsement. You want to hook us <laughs> up here? You can call me for that. Anyway, so she. Uh, Number in the show notes. If, for example, she were to text me at 8 p.m., that's also bedtime with my daughter. Yeah. Right. So now I have to make the decision. Where is the priority? Where is my time going right now? Perhaps there's an emergency at work and perhaps it needs I need to pick up this phone. But I also get to make the choice of that emergency can wait until 9 a.m. tomorrow Mm -hmm. because I only get so many opportunities to put my toddler to bed. It's really important to me, too. Like there's so many times where I've wanted to, like, go out. I finish work at seven o'clock and the temptation to, like, Especially living like 40 minutes outside of the city now, 40 minutes out of downtown. Most of my friends still live downtown. Almost all of my friends live downtown. And the temptation to like, hey, you want to get dinner? You want to go for whatever? I don't drink anymore, but like you want to go out and have a bite to eat, hang out, whatever, go see a movie is so great. But also like I got a daughter to put to bed. And my mom has uh, my parents have our daughter once a week. It's nice for us to go out. Bless them greatly. Wow. Wow. That having been said, blessings. I need to not feel guilt when I go, hey, I'm taking an evening for myself. And I think that oh, comes yeah. back to like maintaining individuality as well. You have to, in the same way you went out on Friday night, I got some time to myself. I thought for a sec, like maybe I'll make plans with a buddy. And then it's like, ah, I could really just like use a night at home. Really and truly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and again, like even even these examples that we're giving, I, I recognize that like it's steeped in privilege, like the, the, the privilege to be able to say, I'm not going to answer my boss's um, phone call because I choose instead to be with my child. Not everybody has that option. Mm. Some people are like, if I don't answer this, I could be losing a job. I could be like, I've had that fear for most of my career. And for, 
and it can be it can be valid. You know what I mean? Like I think a lot of it is like for us can be anxiety. And it's like, ah, I think that if if there's a typo in an email, I'm gonna get fired for this. Are there enough exclamation points? Did right? I put a smiley in this? Right. Comic but, sans, pink, is that okay? But in a truly toxic workplace, like that that can be a valid fear. So, some some managers take advantage of that. Oh my god. They know that like they know that by texting you a certain way, and it's not just managers, mm-hmm. hashtag not all managers. Sure. But people in general know that they can um, Manipulate exploit you. your anxiety yep. like that. Yep. <sighs> the point that I was trying to make a moment ago was I also not, need to not feel bad when I take one of those nights. And when I'm like, hey, I'm not I'm not going to put Nia to bed tonight. I'm going to stay in the city a little bit later. I'm going to yeah. see a friend. I'm going to do whatever. Like, that's OK. And it's OK for me to claim that time in the same Absolutely. way that it's OK for you to claim that time. No, and course. I think you need to claim more of that time. Me too. So. Me too. But like, I also, I like the solo dates we were referring to. I like being by myself. I like filling my cup by myself sometimes. So I don't always need to like be in a crowd or be with another person. I hate crowds. I, I, I've Fuck out grown of here with a crowd. to hate crowds. I used to love, oh my God, Caravana. I had to be like holding onto the truck in the middle of it all. But this latest Caravana, for example, I which is Carnival in Toronto, um, this, as soon as like crowds starting building around me, I'm like, yeah, it's time to go. Like, I can't time do this dip. anymore. I can't. I can't do it anymore. Even at the podcast last last night, um, or on Friday night, when everybody was leaving, it was a giant crowd, and we're all just trying to get on the escalators and the stairs this together, is a rush of people. and start like pushing each other. I'm like, no, like my social anxiety starts like starts building up, and I'm yeah. like, I can't do this. I don't know when that started. Maybe it's like an effect of the pandemic, but I just like to be by myself and like people watch and like write in my book and plan for the future and envision my life and like listen to music read a book i'm the truest definition of an introvert i'll put it on when i need to i deliver when i need to i can host an event if i need to but at the end of that day you need to give me my space and let me refuel my energy i don't mind a crowd if there's like a separation like put me on a stage no problem i hosted that gala a couple hundred people there that was uh was that september what is time? With Lake Ridge? I think that was October. Okay. Anyway, one of the burrs. Now we're in a burr right now. Yeah. December. Oh, last four burrs, yeah. And then we have Jan Burr, Airy. Okay. Anyway, so Lake Ridge. <laughs> like, what? Like, I love that. Big crowd of people. Yeah. I'm the center of attention. Oh, you love Massive it. Massive fan. And tons of fans in the audience. Love that. Always feels great. I was there. But to have that, like... <laughs> To have that separation where I'm not, like, physically that many people to be in the middle of a crowd that big, miss me with that shit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. People rubbing up against you. And we used to take the ferry to the island all the time, Toronto Island, and... Packed. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Standing room only. It's like, it was like being in a tenement. Like, you're just wall to wall with people. What's it? Tenement's like a, like, in the 1910s or whatever. Just have these like awful fucking apartment buildings. Oh, okay, okay. Crammed full of people. Yeah, yeah. So really fifteen tight people, space. no bathroom. Yikes. Why wasn't there a bathroom? It was the nineteen tens. They hadn't invented bathrooms yet. <laughs> they were like shitting into buckets and pouring it out the window. Right. With fifteen people. That's Oi, mate, fine. it's Tuesday, isn't it? In nineteen ten, it did not matter what country you lived in, you everyone sounded like that. Oh, okay. Oi, governor. More more history lessons. You're welcome. For your backside. That's yeah, what people welcome. are coming to do. All right. Should we get into pillow talk? Yeah. We can do the, the thing over my face. If you, you want it to go. Then I'm going to look stupid. Pillow talk? Yeah. It might be funnier if I don't, though, now. And easier. <laughs> Way less editing. Okay, pillow talk. This is the part of the show where we uh, we get a little more intimate. Ask a couple of personal questions. Talk and, about uh, our ship a little deeper. Yeah, and you get to uh, be a part of that conversation and that you are listening. Gets a little sexual we, we sometimes. Can't, can't Maybe right you now. can be part of that. Depends how hot you are. What? Depends how crazy you are, too. Generally speaking, the hotter, the crazier. All right. So in relation to maintaining your individuality, I have a few questions for you. You can also ask me a couple. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. All right. How you feel see. about that? Uh, huh? Indifference. Just like you're very... Neutral question. Transcendent okay. dick. <laughs> okay. In what ways do you feel our relationship supports your personal growth and individuality? 
I think his show is a perfect example. I think our business is a perfect example. Mm. Working together. Business is five years old, by the way. Funnily enough, you need to renew your business license in Ontario every five years. We didn't do that. Didn't do it in time. <laughs> you get a 60-day grace period. Not breaking the law yet, but we will be soon. So yeah, we got a couple weeks to got our account. We got Nando fugitives. on it. He's gonna take care of Shout it. Shout out to Nando. Shout out to Nando. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For you, baby. So in what ways does our relationship support your personal growth? You're not asking how much all this equipment cost. You know, you've noticed. Eh? That's great. You've absolutely noticed. Yeah. I know y'all are seeing all these angles that we're hitting. At the, 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 that's Just more like than one said, camera. Right? Hit the motherfucking. Oh, that was Drake. She never that said that. That was a Drake that. song. Okay. Beyonce has never. Okay. You know that I'm going to be asked and when the cameras go pop, 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 pop. That's what I meant. Okay. So many cameras. Don't, don't worry. Um, We're going to replace the wide angle one soon. So just waiting for that <laughs> so to come. So you know. Through. Just so you know. Canon, please sponsor me. Just give me give me something for free. Good Lord. <laughs> How do you handle moments when you need to time alone or space to recharge emotionally? I have something more for the first one. Oh, good. Okay. So our business together, this show together. Yeah. I think watching you grow and watching you achieve things and being there to cheer for you really motivates me. And I'm definitely getting late after this. And we kind of joke that like we're leap, we leapfrog each other. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. Like, well, explain that. Cause that just sounds sexual. So what you can be. It is. But... That's it. That's it. <laughs> It's um like Dominique will get a raise and then I'll go like, oh man, I'm gonna fucking I gotta fucking hustle. I wanna beat that. And then I'll get a raise for instance, or I'll, oh, I'll get you'll a new go client. like you get like five K more than me. And then so the next one I'm trying to get five K more than you. And it's like we're constantly trying to one up each other. And then I lose my job and I keep have to leave our family. Shout out to my boss again who's watching this. <laughs> I work in a very precarious industry. <laughs> so that's really cool. That really inspires me. And I've just like, I've fucking known you forever. Mm. Met you at 18 years old. We're, We're 32 now. Onions. Yeah. 14 years, bro. That's a long ass time. I take a lot of, as much as I feel that like I get to, I get to, I, I, I feel like my own person. I feel confident. I feel, I'm assertive. I feel in control. And this is the first time in my life that I've been able to say that, and I've said it consistently for probably the last eight months. Mm -hmm. This has mm -hmm. been a really fucking good year for me. And I love who I am, I'm proud of myself, and uh, I think a lot of that is from the support that you've given me. And so, as much as like I can still feel like I'm my own person, I'm still aware that like, I am very much attached to you in people's eyes. Like even on TikTok, for instance, I'm like the wife and kid guy. I think a lot of people see me like that. Why is your entire relationship? Why is your entire personality your kid? Or why is your entire personality your marriage? And it's not. That's what a lot of people see. That can be kind of difficult. Mm. It can be kind of difficult to when I post something that's like just me and it fucking does crickets because you assholes aren't watching it then that can feel kind of tough. Sure. But at the but end of the day, Also, your like, crickets are like, oh, this only got half a million rather than a million. But I get it. I get it. The point is, like, I I, I, I don't want to be um, anything other than your husband. I don't want to be anything other than my daughter's father. And I don't need to be because I have the confidence to know who I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's been the biggest growth. You. definitely <laughs> definitely after this no that that honestly means a lot because it means a lot because uh especially the past like three years for us have been so incredibly fucking difficult and watching you because of cancer and covid and a newborn damn near die twice and then knowing that 
it was so hard for us to plan for our next chapter. It was so hard for you, especially to allow yourself to have longer term goals. Even booking our trip to Grenada this summer. Almost. Didn't I fucking happen. kicked the can on that one so long because it was I and then I finally admitted to you. I'm like, I I'm afraid to plan things because what if I get a bad scan? What if my oncologist goes, it's back, bitch. What do we do? Right. And then we just spent all this money. Well, we'd still go on a vacation. Come on. I mean, that's not how you framed it back then. Nah, but yeah, it, it's how I'm it's, framing it now. It's 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 knowing how hard it's been. And that the priority has not been on self-care or has, we haven't had the privilege of thinking about like, ah, how can I show up a happier person? How can mm. I, you know what? It's been on survival for mm. so long for us and survival as of our, our newborn survival during a pandemic, survival during cancer. And so it's finally seeing you thriving and, and, and proud of who you are and, and standing in who you are and building for the future. And that just makes me so fucking emotional. Like I'm here getting Wet. misty. We could have had a moment. We really, we really could have. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I, can't, I truly you're can't not. help myself though. <laughs> Have a moment afterwards. <laughs> keep, going, keep going. Keep no, going. No, 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 no. The no. moment is gone. I'm proud of you. Anyways, next question. No, keep going. Give me, give me another ten seconds. No, it's it. That was the end. That I almost died. Come on. <laughs> oh my, keep that's going. you. That's your sexy voice. I yeah. almost died. Yeah, and now like you're 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 making moves. You're you're planning and you're trying new things and you're you're looking good as fuck. You're in the gym. Like I know if y'all haven't seen the video of him in the. The gray sweatpants. Should we stop recording? You wanna? No, let's keep away. Um, how do you handle moments when you need time alone or space to recharge? I mean, after that comment, I think I need some time alone <laughs> with you. Let's leave the cameras rolling. Live stream this <laughs> next time. How Shit. do you handle it when you need to recharge? I haven't been good at that historically, and I'm better at it now. Even today, I was like, hey, I need 20 minutes. Yeah. I need 20 minutes. We were at Costco. I need 20 minutes to eat the rest of this fucking cold, sad slice of Costco pizza in this room, which is also my office, alone. And that was really good for me. Or like, I need 20 minutes to go on the treadmill. Or I got to go to the gym. And I felt guilty historically for asking that mm -hmm. because I knew that I was not doing, that I was not holding up my end of the bargain in our home. That I was not parenting as much as I should have been, that I was not as emotionally available as I should have been. And some of that was because I was sick from cancer. Some of that was because I was tired from cancer. Some of that was because I was bad at communicating. Some of that was because of whatever. And giving myself permission to recharge, being kinder to myself, forgiving myself has been, that's how I recharge. Getting things done is how I recharge. Um, accomplishing something big and then taking a breather, feeling like I earned it. I'm unable to recharge when I feel like I haven't been productive and maybe that's a little too much capitalism, but yeah, yeah, it's kind of like if I go to the gym, I can feel good about eating a big ass meal afterwards. If I don't go to the gym, and maybe this is also too much anorexia. Then I can't, I, I haven't, I've got to, I've got to work for it before I can enjoy it. Yikes. But also like maybe not the anorexia, also not the capitalism. Maybe some of that's okay. Like, like delaying instant gratification. Sure. Sure. To get like, to be productive and to reward yourself at the end of the day. Like getting all my shit done having nothing left on my to-do list, which is impractical. You're always going to have some stuff. Sure. But if I can meet deadlines, if I can get all of that done, then I feel like, okay, I, I can truly relax now because I don't have anything that, like, needs to be done. But I really think you hit the nail on the head when you said, like, too much capitalism because that mm. really is internalized capitalism, thinking that I haven't been productive enough. I haven't brought enough to the table. I haven't made my company enough money. I haven't... Uh, the fucking enough. shareholders. What about the shareholders? <laughs> I haven't provided enough ROI to my company to justify taking this this lunch break, to justify taking this sick day. I'm shitting this on the day clock off. all the time. I <laughs> save it up. You. First good, thing I do when I get there. Good for you. Good for you. 
And I'm not saying that in a judging way. Like that's that's 100 percent me. You know me. Like I'll work through a lunchtime and like still not even take like leave early because of it. Like I'm making sure if I need to leave early today. Oh, there's no breaks. I'm making sure I'm like delivering as much as I can because I need to leave earlier. One of the problems with that, though, is that if you're always if you're never taking a break at work like the breaks that you're owed. And if you're constantly working over the, let's say the 37 and a half hours you're paid for, you're never going to feel like you're getting anything done because you're like, well, I'm skipping lunch and I still can't get this done. Maybe I'm the problem. And And the reality is for most people, Mm -hmm. you are given more work than you are being paid for. Oh my God. You are overproductive. Yes. Yes, And and this, my dad says this all the time. He's like, oh, quiet quitting. You know, people just want to like work to rule. No, working to rule is like, is holding up your end of the contract. You could flip it around and say your company's quiet quitting you by like not giving you tons of bonuses and sure, extra like but not incentives. doubling your pay. Sure. Which sure. would be ridiculous. No one's expecting that. Right. Well, yeah, that'd be nice. And so why is there an expectation that like you should be twice as productive? Right. Or like if your team loses a member. You got to pick up that slack. You're now two fucking people. Exactly. You know, like you're in accounting and now you're accounting twice as, what the fuck do accountants do? <laughs> now you're using Excel now twice as much. you're in accounting much. twice as yeah, much. Is that know. what you <laughs> You're calculating double the information. Absolutely. Absolutely. Final question. Uh, what activities were- I want were... to ask it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I like, okay. You feel honored? Yeah. I didn't know you were going to ask me a question. What activities or interests do you consider uniquely yours, separate from our shared experiences? Well, why this question? Because you know I don't have anything. You know I have no hobbies. You went out on Friday with Shakira. Yeah. And the big who deal was, like was throwing that. throwing it around on the gram. Oh, like, you gotta love Shakira. Shakira. Big up Carnival Spice, you know? Those, those were a lot of air horns. Here's two more. You didn't want to be pleased and thanked after this. I understand. you've been to her classes. What are we? No, I, what are I we mean, not supporting I mean, why, black women why, now? I, I love Shakira. Oh, whew, that's what we're. That's what you're gonna try. That's what you're gonna try. Interesting. Anyways, the y'all big... expected it to be me. No one's a bigger ally. <laughs> Put that white fist down. <laughs> <laughs> the the biggest. The reason it was such a big deal that I went out with Shakira. I'm really nervous that my skirt's writing up, and that this white shot just sees my ass cheek. In which case, you're welcome. You need a welcome, wider camera for like, all that ass. What up? But it's, it's because I never go out. So do I have hobbies outside of my job? Like, is this a hobby? This is kind of like a, a side oh, man. hustle at this This ain't point. a mindset. It's a grind set. Sir. The hell? <laughs> so stupid. What is my hobby? Listen, at one point. Like, I guess I go to the gym pretty damn often. And that's something that's for me. And that's my time I alone. I love going to the gym. The first thing in the morning. Fucking Absolutely. hate going. Love being but there. But love being there, right? Love oh, leaving. Man. Are we like oh, those people man. now? Are we those people? Ew. Who like look good? Feel good? No, but who like, oh, I love the gym. Oh. oh and we don't drink anymore. Treating my body. Like, who are we? Uh, uh, what are you looking for? What, what, what's going what's gonna to happen? Okay. All right. Um... <laughs> I used to take uh, dance fitness classes at. Um, oh, oh was Snoopy. Yeah, that I, was the guy's name, right? Well, yeah, but what was what's the place called? Uh, uh, anyways, Toronto Underground. At the Underground, thank you. So there'd be like heels classes and hip hop and dance hall and Shakira does um, uh, with Carnival Spice. They do uh, soca classes. So I think that's something I really like to get back into in the new year. Maybe I'll um, do a Soka class. You should. She yeah. has a big class tomorrow, actually. It's going to be her final dancer. class for the year, but she she does it all year round. Um, Private lessons? For us, together. Why do you want to die by my hand? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Those nails are looking extra sharp. Mm. Anyways, so in the new year, I think I'd like to do like a pole class. I, I did like a four-week you did intensive a, You did pole ones. dancing like 10 years ago. Exactly. I think I'd like to get back into it. Brass fixings. Uh, if shut, we're naming a lot of brands here with very little um, return from these brands. Is I'm brass fixings still around? I, they are. Yeah? Yeah, they are. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'd like to do a pole class again. I'd love to do a heels class, maybe like a combined heels and pole class. Okay. Uh, I, get back into dance. It, it really, it's a way of like, Connecting with my body, mm. feeling confident again, energizing. Um, 
But beyond that, there really isn't much that I do. Like every week, I probably journal and, and set an intention for the week, um, which will include like how I show up as a mom, how I show up as a wife um, in my job, for example. But what is it that I do for myself and how do I celebrate myself? I think that's something I really need to focus on in the new year. I want to shoot a documentary. Yeah. And also like, I need to do stand up. I need to you do because you've been talking about for years. I know, and I feel like such a little bitch because I'm like I'm afraid. I don't think I'm afraid to go up anymore. I think it's just like finding the time to do it, and also like I'm a great writer, but I'm way better off the cuff. I feel sure, and like I don't want to waste people's time. You're going up there like you got to have a tight set. Bring your friends. The first time is gonna be the worst time. Like that's that's the lowest it's ever gonna what get. If the, what if the first time is the best time? Then let it be the last. Well, no, because you got to see how bad it can get. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> do it. That, that should be one. Of, that should be on your twenty twenty four bingo card. Yeah, go out and do Doing it. Stand eh? up. Like in the city, I'm not going to do it out here. Well, what's here? It's exactly. Yeah. No. So, no. 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 A lot of fentanyl addiction. Don't laugh. That's not funny. Yikes. Okay. So that that we're we're that's that's on the the docket for next year. We're gonna do a poll. I'm gonna do a poll class. You're gonna do a soca class. Uh, you're going to shoot a documentary. I was joking about the Selka class. You should. You should absolutely. Shout out to uh, um, Carnival Spice. You're going to do a class. With... You're going to do a class with them. You're going to shoot a documentary. Did you want to talk about your idea for the documentary just yet or leave it alone? No, nah, leave it alone for now. Okay. And then you're going to do uh, you're, you're going to do a stand up. Just because we're almost at the end of the episode. I feel okay. like I should save that, you know? Yeah. I mean, like also like, I don't know, make sure you like nobody can steal it. Okay. So I'll never talk about it then. Maybe that's so, it. Maybe I'll continue never talking about it and then never doing it. <laughs> okay. That's the way, right? You do you. Uh, final segment, mailbox. I like to call it the comment section. You fight me on this. Because if the theme is, weekly, is house, right? And we have all these house-related names. So then why don't we watch the show house? Why don't I put a TV in the background? Oh, my. That would be funny. We... Playing house. And it's the show house <laughs> playing in the background. <laughs> uh, we watch that show a lot. When we were in university, um, and it would be in the background when we were fucking. We were. I was not doing that with you in university. Stop it. Having sex with me no. in university, you definitely. No, well, when we moved in together, that was like my last year. It was never in your dorm room. Stop that. Stop okay. that. I was a good little Christian girl. Okay. So. <laughs> try to try to use some time as you find the button, eh? That. Okay. So what we're doing this time around is we're having um, listeners send in their voice note and ask their question. This could be related to anything to do with relationships. Doesn't have to be romantic. Doesn't have to be ours. Could be platonic. Any relationship around you. Hey, Dom and Coulter. Long time listener. First time caller. So I just wanted to know if you guys had a biopic, who would you want to play you and what would you want the end of the movie to look like? Bye. <laughs> Meryl Streep. Ah, great. That choice. bitch can play anybody. She could, I feel like she should play both of us. This. She's ex, she she could and she'd play her better than I ever could. Yeah. She'd be a yeah. better Dominique than Absolutely. you would. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um oh my god, what was her name? She was the chick uh, from Girlfriends. Oh, she's an option. Mm. Honestly, so the, the ultimate person I would want to play me because she's just like a badass, um, Angela Bassett. Mm. Not because she looks at me like me or I look like her on any level, but just because she can act her ass off. Sure. Um, so that would be the ultimate like honor. But if we're talking like resemblance, yeah, I guess um, 20 Childs. What was what's the, what's the real name? Tony Childs? Tony Childs. That was her character on Girlfriends. Jill Marie? Was that her name? Uh, yeah. Jill Marie Jones. Okay. Her or um, I think her name was was Fanny from um, the Jamie Foxx show. Furiously typing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Fanny. No, Garcelle was... Beauvais? Yes. A lot of people on um a lot of people on TikTok. She did Playboy? Did she? Damn. Yeah, she's hot. Um, okay. Which issue is this? You know what? I don't really see it. I'm I'm looking at her now, and I'm like, no, I, I it would be um Tony Childs. What was her name? Jill Marie. Yeah. 
uh, SZA like just for the lips, just for the lips, SZA. just because she got she got some sexy ass lips and like I to be represented on by a her. Second time, do you see that? Oh no! Canceled her Toronto show like ten minutes before she was supposed. I think she was on stage, and then uh, this week because she had rescheduled it for December twenty twenty five. What? Forever away, right? Or maybe it was twenty four. Anyway, long like a year away. Just canceled it. She's like, I'm not doing it. Fuck you, Toronto. Is she sick? She's not sick. I don't know. Better not, not be. That we I've need seen, her to, we need her to play you. Yikes! No, no I've, she. I, and how do we want I, it? I don't to see end? it. It's honestly just because she has big lips. Um, how do you want it to end? With like a really hot threesome. What? Are you not satisfied? Yeah, I am. So why? Why? Because it's just a movie. This? It's fiction. It's fictionalized. It's a make them up. They take liberties all the time. How much is your life insurance again? A million, million bucks. So me with a million dollars. <laughs> and that was... You almost uh, got it when I died from <laughs> cancer, so just remember that. Could happen again that way. We'll see. Uh, and that was mailbox. <laughs> and that was also episode four of Playing House. The last one, we'll find out. <laughs> Cameras will stay rolling so you can't fucking kill me. Follow me on uh, fucking everywhere at Coulter Talks, Coulter with a K. And on TikTok, I'm at Dom Creates, but on Instagram, it's at Dom Dot Creates. Still working on it. You ready? For what? I don't know. Turn the cameras off, or yeah, and wash off this makeup. Yeah, let's let's go. I meant like sex. <laughs>